A sum of 10 million naira has been alleged recovered from some offices of Zone 16 yeah. in Biosta State. Um, the, the offices were accused of extorting the set sum from NYS members traveling to River State. The situation is particularly there for individuals entering Biosta from Delta to West Mbiyama who are frequently subjected to unlawful demands for money. A disturbing incident occurred on September 17, 2024, when NYSE members traveling to River State were forced into passing 10 million naira. They were threatened, detained, and subjected to emotional stress. The officers involved used an account belonging to Ikem Alozi of Marvi Global Resources Limited for their illicit activities. No complaints against the victims no incriminating evidence found on them, nobody signed their bail bound. This is not policing. Following a report I filed on October 20, uh, 25, 2024, with the Inspector General of Police Complaints Response Unit, a successful retrieval of the extorted funds was achieved on today, November 5, 2024. The victims have provided statements to the police and the officers are attached to to surveillance unit AID zone 16 BIOS estate. If no action is taken, these officers will continue to exploit innocent victims. Uh, Mr. Suzy, uh, BIOS uh, state is, is, is um, a, um, what do you call it? It's, um, um, it's, it's slick close, close to river states. We share boundaries, yes. that's, that's what to say. Mm. So we, we have, um, individuals always traveling on a daily basis so i i don't know what what's what's going to be your thoughts on this because this police are said to be um on people that are supposed to protect lives and properties yes. and here we see situations where they're extorting victims that go on their daily lives to mm. to 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 sort their needs especially the nyse call i i don't know what this the, this is going to turn out to be but i want to get your thoughts about this about um what the police have have been going on to do well uh over time in history in our history we've had this one i just want to uh, some of us that are very religious today, we thank God for the NYS people for even having the opportunity to come out alive and begin to testify their stories. Yeah. If not, they would have ended at that moment. I remember a story long ago, it was 2001 or 2002, well, then I was in Lagos when we heard about the issue of, of Apple 6. Have you heard about Apple 6? Yes. Where people who are traveling to go into markets with cash, we are shot dead and all I'm of taking that. Their money, taking their money. You're taking their money. So mm -hmm. it, this one is just. I believe that providence, divine providence, actually saved these young people. If not, they would have ended their lives. Do you know how many people ended in this particular situation? And then if we want to also, if the police also want to do a thorough job, we should also investigate how a copper will carry 10 million naira in a vehicle. Are you getting what I'm saying? How a copper will carry 10 million naira in a vehicle in this part of... No, and what, 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 happened question in, uh, what happened is, there mm -hmm. was that... They, according to the story, according to what they said, when this core member wanted to make a transfer, because mm. after they had held them there for about 30 minutes, that's the police now allegedly, when they wanted to make a transfer, they made a transfer of 15,000 mm. naira. But then the police was with their phone, one of the policemen was with their phone, and saw the alerts. You know, so, so he saw the balance. That was it. Yes, so he saw the balance and he said, ah, so you have this kind of money. And, you didn't even and they that. wanted to let them go initially. Uh. But when they saw that, they're like, okay, <laughs> we're taking you. And according to what the story said, when they got there, they took pictures of them, called them internet fraud stars. Mm. And then they told them to start calling their family members. Mm. So they started calling people to send money. So that's where all of these monies came from. Okay. So not like they had okay. ten million naira. Well, right, I saw I saw the uh, when I when I said, saw the video, I thought it was like a pack they, they of biscuits. Took, they told <laughs> them to start that's, bring it, that's money. That's Nigerian bring, naira. Bringing the Nigerian naira yes. mm. to so that estate. This is not the first time we are hearing stories. Stories like, like this. It's not news. 
we hear this over and over again to the extent that sometimes when we see pictures of internet fraudsters online mm. alleged internet fraudsters some mm. Nigerians don't even believe that they are internet fraudsters anymore because it could be anything yes. it could be a scenario like, like this. this so how do we feel safe with the people who are supposed to be protecting us if this keeps happening over and over again it's a very it's a very sad story and then it it's it, it put us in a precarious situation where you, you couldn't even trust even the security person that is guarding your premises and all of that, because, uh, uh, like Kamas will always talk about the issue of material condition, who determines a man's consciousness. But you see, if, 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 there are those who actually have integrity. I wouldn't want of to course. use. I wouldn't want to use there myself. Police officers who have yeah, integrity. Yeah, there police officers. Even during the NSAS protests, you mm. see that some police officers, where people were, some other police people were murdered, some people were celebrated and all of that. Mm. So you could still see, even in that force, there are those who are good. But there are also those who are actually bad. It doesn't matter the level of orientation. They will still remain at that particular consciousness where they are. So what do we do? Now, the Nigerian police, for some time, when they now um, lift the ban for uh, uh, a kind of recruitment of police or army and air force and all that, I, I pity the country. I pity the country because the young people that, if you walk along the street, some of us that are on the street, you look at the street. I may not likely want to go back to go and start being a policeman or a soldier and all that. But you see... The young people that are growing up today, their mindset, not all, some of them, like we could say, that some are still good. Some of their mindset are bastardized. And some of these ones that their mindset are bastardized now, still have this consciousness to actually join the force. And when they are joining this force now, you don't see what they are radiating in them because they will play along the rules and join the force. But the intention of the man joining the force is another different thing. And what they see. And you understand? The, the examples that they see, let's mm. even start from there. Yeah. The examples so, that they see. Yes, because even if we say, ah, the reason, some, of, some people could also argue that the reason for this is because uh, the economy is bad and all of that. Even the place where I was asking somebody yesterday, because we argue about this every day, I told somebody yesterday, I said, in this economy that people are crying, there are those who actually would not want this economy to even go. To go better to you, you understand because there are those who are benefiting from it. So, um, d don't you think that this also calls for concern? Because in most cases, mm. they they don't want transfers; they insist on. They cash. remain at that particular place. That's some of the police people. Yeah, where they are, they, because that some of them you they will transfer them. They will still walk their transfer back to where no, they No, no, that's not what I mean. Okay. I mean, when they meet these innocent victims, alleged frustrations, okay. like they say, okay. when they want to ask for money, most times they don't ask for transfers, so mm. it will not be traced to them. Mm. Like they what's only, yes, now? yes, like what just happened? They ask for cash. So, um, and, and then we, we want to believe that these are people that are supposed to protect us, but they always give us wrong na narratives about um, security and stuff. You know, it's it calls for concern. It is not just this one is one you have on the on on the news. I, I remember on a good day somebody met me somewhere where we were just sitting out with friends and then the young people they came complaining that they just met some police people around and then they collected five hundred thousand naira from them. And we, we filmed. I was angry, I said, Where are they? One of the man who is the CSO of one of the community also was like, Why didn't people call me? So that we we'll go there and protect you people. Just of recent, three young people were arrested along this uh, Rumo C axis. And before they know, they found themselves at Bayasa. And they stayed for two weeks. And before that time, they even transferred, the police will transfer 400,000 naira from their account. So that's okay, for people, so that's for, sorry, so, sorry, to, sorry to cut you. That's for people who, who know people to call, who have people to call. I'm, like, that's what I'm then, saying. Imagine, imagine you, you don't know me. anybody. I, I know you don't have anyone just, to I, I know someone who just, sorry, I know someone who just came to, came to Port Harcourt from Lagos, mm. right? And... Before you knew, just to move from this place to this point, from this point to this point, a distance of 100 naira, right? And that was it. That was the end of it. What happened? They stopped them and they were asking for receipts of his uh, laptop and then they asked for his... Revolious things they were asking for, understand? just to indict him. Before, before mm. you knew it, how much, 50,000 naira left his account and he's like, I'm going back to Lagos. I'm and, the, and they're always on a safe heaven when they see somebody they, they seem to, mm. they feel to be But let's like, talk about why this, why, why this is thriving and how we can, how, what, what measures you think can be taken to solve this problem? Well, uh, our problem, our problem in solving this problem is actually in Nigeria we are divided into ethnic lines and political lines. When you indict a man who has done wrong in Nigeria, 
when the news goes to the public, you remember the first question they will ask, where is it from? That is another problem we have in Nigeria. Which political party, who is he working for? You understand? That is the way all our social strata, that is the way we are structured. So if not, we have laws. Our criminal codes and all of that have, they are competent enough to prosecute somebody who has done wrong, like what the policeman had just done now, or what they are doing. Mm -hmm. If we have people who are going to be prosecuted, because the Nigeria ju ju uh, uh, justice system, jurisprudence and all of that, it delidalis. At the time you discover that somebody, even this police officer now, you will not hear their matter any longer. Before you know, they are back to the streets. The that is what it is. So even even the, even the inspector or police or commissioners or IGs, all, all of them will come and read riot acts. But how far? You understand? Yeah, if we see, does, and does it mean that these um, individuals have no right to um, um, show of uh, things they have? Because we see situations where you see young adults, mm, youths mm. with flashy cars, and then some of them actually do legal businesses. Yes. They, 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 they practice legal professions, mm. and they are not safe. They feel like, oh, if I'm on the road and the police catches me, then um, I'm gone. And then they want to really lay low. Does it mean that the youths are not really safe to really be themselves, to, to wear certain clothes, to, to drive certain cars? Uh, th th this has a call for concern. So you, you talked about um, the government implementing, putting measures and all. What if they actually put these measures and it is not taken um, into consideration? Are we actually... Uh, are how, how are we sure that it will not continue? How are we sure that those policies are really implemented? We are not even denying the fact that there are no policies to actually checkmate the, the actions and inactions of policemen and even us that are doing businesses and all of that. But you have said something like I told you, there are some perceptions. And those perceptions, some of the perception misconceptions about how we make our money. And there is this perception about the fact that every rich man in Nigeria must have stolen money from either from government or is doing one or do one or, or, or other two shady deals. But you, you have noted that are genuine people doing business and they are making money at all mm -hmm. and they are not safe. Mm -hmm. I remember a time where I was talking to somebody, I said, even today that I am running around the community struggling, trying to put on OTT together, by the time I make money, you will be classified, you will be put in that class of those who have stolen money from the society. You are not safe with those who don't have it at the time. You are not also safe with those who are protecting you. You understand? But is it really someone's fault to have made money in life? The answer is yes or no. Somebody will explain to me. Why the perception? So I believe that punishment, that is the reason why the law is very important. And any law without punishment is not law.